Hello, my crafty friends. It's Michelle, the Southern Shell, and I'm going to share with you the process that I did when I was creating my little lotus tray. Now, this can be a coaster or just a little trinket tray next to your bed. Um, I had an idea of what I wanted to do, and so I got it cleaned out and made sure there wasn't any dust particles, leftover glitter, anything like that. And I'm getting my J Diction resin out, which is a one-to-one um, -one mixture. So I have part A and part B. I try to keep it in alphabetical order. I use these cups from Walmart. They're little four ounce cups that have the little lines on the side. So I know right where my resin is poured to and I can make sure I have the same amount in each cup. Now I'm pouring each of those little bits of resin into my bigger cup, which is a six ounce cup. And I also got that at Walmart. I pour in my part B first, which is the hardener, and then I pour in my part A. And then it calls you to, it tells you to mix thoroughly, but you also wanna mix slowly. Their instructions are to mix three to five minutes and make sure you don't have any more clouds in your resin mixture. So as you can see, this is sped up very fast. I didn't think you'd wanna watch me stir resin for three minutes <laughs> but anyway I have my pearl white mica powder from Arteza and I'm just coming in with a paintbrush and I'm just going along the little raised edges of the inside of this mold now if I would have taken my time and done it just like I did here it would have been beautiful but I got impatient and I just got faster and faster and of course that tends to make mica a little more messy. So um, you'll just see me continuing on here and I'm gonna try to be really careful, but you can see I'm trying to dust it off the edges and all it's doing is smearing it around. And it, it just got frustrating for me. So I'm trying to clean it up a little bit and decided that it was just not gonna work right then. And I'm just gonna continue around the edges and hopefully, you know, I can get it off in a little bit. This does take time and patience if this is what you wanna do. If you only want your mica powder in one little area, use a small brush and just take your time. Now I've learned in a different project that I've done after the fact on this one, what worked better for me on the other project I did was to actually spray some alcohol on the end of my paintbrush there and it did lift up the mica powder but um like i said i had already done this one first so a little too light for this particular one um, i will go in and try to clean it up some more which you'll see here in a minute but i just wanted to go around and get these done and i'm trying so hard for that to lift up you would think that i would learn that all it's doing is spreading it around so i did pause it and i went in and i tried just like an alcohol wipe and tried to wipe it up it did do a little better but nothing like it should have been so once again i'm just going to clean up my mess there and go with the flow here you can kind of see the um iridescent rainbow stuff from the alcohol um, it was dry but it you know I had already used it on the mold and there was with the mica powder and stuff it just did what it did so I'm just gonna put a very um, thin layer across the bottom of this I want to be able to try to control the bloom on this now here I am trying to control a bloom when I've tried to make some blooms and it's they're just not as easy as they look guys but let's let this sit for a few minutes and we'll get our alcohol ink ready I don't want any bubbles in here uh, as few as possible which I'm going to use my heat gun I have this on a high heat but I have it on a low blow so that I can come on in and just make sure there's no bubbles there were a few more in there that didn't want to come up, so I'm just going ahead and popping them, bringing them to the surface and getting them gone. And then I'll spray it with some alcohol across the top and let that sit for a minute so I'm not working with any wet surface. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and create the white resin mix that I used to create my petals. Now this resin has been sitting probably between 20 and 30 minutes. I'm going to add in my casting craft which makes this um, less transparent and it'll give it a more opaque coloring. Then I'm going to go ahead and work on adding in my white pigment. This is Mirandi white pigment and I got it off of Timu and um, I just thought I would go ahead and try their resin pigment to see how well it works. It's actually not too bad. I'm sure there are some that'll be a lot more concentrated, which is probably what I'm going to try next. Now after I get that um, white pigment added into the resin, I'm adding about four drops of each and I'm hoping that that will be plenty because it is not a lot of resin. I'm going to mix it thoroughly and then I look at it and check it and I see that on the stick it's still too transparent. I was going to add some white pigment powder anyway so I'm using my little eight teaspoon here and I'm adding two scoops of my crystal white mica powder and I'm going to get that in there and I'm going to mix that well. I'm going to do it slowly but I'm going to mix it well until that mica powder is dissolved into that resin. You don't want any clumps left there. And look at there on that stick. It looks very good. So the next step is for me to use a small pastry bag. And I got these off of Amazon and they're just small pastry bags disposable. And I use a cup to put the pastry bag over it so I have a good spot to actually pour my resin into. I'm going to pour the resin and scoop it out with my craft stick and I'm going to do my best to make sure every drop is out of that cup. So now it's time to get started. Um, after I do this, I'm going to get the alcohol inks out that I need to make the blooms. I'm using white alcohol ink and gumball alcohol ink because I wanted a lighter bloom. I don't have an alcohol ink that's lighter than the gumball, so I'm hoping that they'll blend well with the white alcohol ink. Currently, I'm getting all the air out of my pastry bag, and I'm going to snip the bottom of that and test it. It's great. Now, usually I put the mixture for the blooms in after the alcohol ink. But because I want to try to keep the blooms within the petals themselves, I'm gonna try to do some of it beforehand. I'm so sorry about the glare from the lights above. I'm trying to find the perfect place to film. I'm just struggling right now with the basement and I will figure it out. Anyhow, I'm going to go over each and every one of these blooms that is in this mold and I'm going to do that twice. I want it to be nice and built up and that way when it sinks down because it will be heavier when it sinks down in the mold it will be on top of the etching that is in the bottom of the mold. Now that I have all of the bottom etching covered with my white resin mixture I'm going to come in with my white alcohol ink. When you drop your white alcohol ink on top, it does not sink right away. It is pretty light and it will sit on top of your resin, especially since you've had your resin sitting for a little bit. And that way you are going to start your blooms. Now I'm coming in with my gumball and it's going to go right on top of where I dropped those white alcohol droplets. And as you do this, you're gonna see it just is gonna start to move again. Now I'm gonna come in once more and I'm gonna trace the outline of where those etchings are on the bottom of your mold. This is gonna help me get another good bloom. 
and that's a lot of white pigment but I do think that this particular one is going to need it if I'm going to keep those blooms separate on the bottom of the etching so I'm just going to go on through here and do my best to do that at this point I'm going to take my stylus and I'm just going to go into each of those bloom areas that are etched and I'm just going to drag that alcohol ink and the resin mixture that I, I made a little heavier with the powders and I'm going to go in and I'm going to drag it around each petal trying to keep it in there and not moving outside the the petal edges now it's time to let it cure Woohoo! now we can take it out of its mold it has been it's the next day and it's been um i believe it's been 18 hours at this point and we're just going to pull this out of the mold and see how well this bloom did now I'm a little concerned because of the mica powder I tried to trace on those edgings at the bottom, but let's see. Oh, that's not bad at all. Not bad. I can see the um, mica powder in some areas and some it didn't stick out too well. It's um, still a little pliable, so you can, if you take it out, when it you can actually demold it you can take it out and start shaping things I'm gonna leave this one flat though um, the blooms did happen but there are some places where I did the mica powder over the edging that it just didn't do what I wanted and I can see when I tried to clean it up that I didn't get it all cleaned up so it is a little foggy but um, against the white mm, not so good it, it kind of washes itself out but I think that is just beautiful the way it is so I hope that you enjoyed this as always stay safe God bless bye for now